appreciated for your fellowship and your uh, your patience with us. Uh, it takes time uh, to grow. Uh, we think about uh, our our own children. Uh, it takes patience to learn how to love one another, and uh, we think about what they just experienced yesterday. They got into a uh, a, a big old rumor raw and uh josiah's walk around walking around with the injuries from it and so don't don't point it out to him because he's already got a complex about it uh just let him know you'll be praying for him amen uh we uh went out and uh he got hit in the mouth with a toy busted up his lip and and uh, i i went to um i went to dr right uh right down the road there got some of that liquid uh uh, uh, that liquid band-aid and pulled his mouth shut and put a lot of uh, that band-aid liquid on there for him, amen. And uh, I hope it does work, amen. So, uh, and uh, anyways, uh, you know, just uh, wanna, uh, I want to, I want to appreciate uh, uh, you today as uh, the representation of First Baptist Church. Uh, you know, you could, you can have a pastor and not have a congregation, amen. And uh, it wouldn't be what God want. You can have a congregation and not have a pastor, and it still wouldn't be what God wants. And so uh, it's really inspired my heart today uh, in preaching this message. We're going to be uh, looking into endeavoring with the Spirit of God uh, this morning. And so uh, I want to I want to say to you this morning, uh, from the day that we uh, arrived uh, here on the shores of Flat Rock. Uh, it has been a quick, quick three years. I mean, it has superseded. I've never seen time go by so fast uh, as it has. And so, uh, so what am I, I want to try to drive to you this morning is how we can get to the next year and the next year and the following year because I don't believe that God has put us together uh, so that we can just uh, frail and Call church is a good place. Uh, church is a uh, it's an important place. It's a serious place. God put a lot of emphasis on the church, and uh, and so I want to, uh, uh, with my best ability uh, this morning, I want to be able to go through some scriptures and bring some things out uh, out of the Bible. And I pray that you brought your Bible. Uh, if you don't have one, they have one in the back. Uh, you can welcome to take one of those. And, uh, but, you know, you need to see the scriptures uh, for yourself. Uh, do think about uh, in the upcoming future, uh, it is planned for us to have communion, uh, not on the 22nd, but on the 19th, of, uh, and that's a Sunday. Uh, be, and uh, you plan to be that. That's next Sunday. Uh, and so uh, then the following uh, time as we run, you know, the time of the end of the year is here. And uh, but we do want to make sure that we are always and no matter how often we do communion, we always want to make sure that we have slotted a date for uh, for two months. In other words, uh, we want to make sure that we slot one of those dates in April uh, for um, the resurrection of Christ. And then the other date is where uh, we celebrate the birth of Christ in December. So on December the 24th will be the second date uh, and uh, that we will conclude our communion for this year. Uh, in the next year, the next following year, uh, we're going to do a whole lot better than what we have done this past year and, and slotting out those dates. Amen. And so I uh, appreciate you being involved in that. Uh, church is not only uh, an involvement for the pastor, but church is to be an involvement for every member. Amen. Hebrews states it like this, not forsaking the assembly of God, as the man of some, as the man of some do. Some do. Some forsake the assembly of God. And so I, I will tell you simply that when you are not in uh, the house of God, you mess out on a blessing, uh, on a spiritual blessing. Uh, I've been teaching our children uh, that they uh, made mention this past Wednesday in, uh, in, in a sermon there, but made mention that uh, the Bible says that uh, uh, the ways of man uh, seem to be right, but the ends thereof, and I know I'm paraphrasing, my mind's thinking of a lot of things, and I apologize, uh, but the ways uh, therein are death. Uh, and so in other words, 
we can do things that we think that was right, and a lot of times there is no spiritual blessings in it. So until you get to learn what God has placed and emphasized for you and I to be involved into, then that's when the blessings are going to come. And so God commands every believer to be in the house of God. So I, I hope that I'm with, uh, with you this morning uh, in correlation to the message because uh, God's paying attention to the things that we do and say. Amen. And so, uh, so I would invite you for the reading of the word of God in Ephesians chapter 4. Again, uh, Ephesians chapter 4. And, and I, again, I appreciate and love everyone. And, and uh, I know I'm not the best individual and the most kindness and all of that. That's why God has given me a wife. Amen. When you can't get it from your pastor, you go to his, his wife and you'll get that kindness and sweetness all from her. Amen. Uh, and so I uh, appreciate my wife. Amen. Uh, I texted her this morning. Uh, happy anniversary to you, honey. Amen. The center of Rose and and all of that. And uh, but I just really appreciate her being there for me. Uh, Ephesians chapter four would invite you for the standing and reading of the word of God. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter four. We're going to read just verses uh, one through twelve. And so read along with me in your Bible. But the Bible mentions here in Paul uh, verse one. I therefore the prisoner of the Lord. I just want to stop right there. I mean, you know, we can stop right there and preach that today. But we want to be able to get what God wants for us. But here, uh, Paul says, I, therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called, with all lowliness and meekness and long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit even as ye are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore, he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive. And gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it? But that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth. He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints for the work of the ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ uh, I would like to take the time and read that whole chapter uh, but to save our time uh, and for the message today we want to stop our reading here but let's go to the Lord in prayer at this moment Heavenly Father we thank you dear God for the reading Lord we think about Lord for that perfecting of the saints and lord here we are today dear god in your house and 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 ready and willing to learn what you would have for us but god as we look into our future we pray dear god that you would help us to be more faithful than we have ever been knowing dear god that the time is short and realizing dear god that you're coming back soon and so lord we preach that but yet dear god there's going to be a day that that day is going to come soon when, Lord, we'll see you face to face. And then all the regrets in our life will be, uh, will be choked up into our hearts at one time because we'd have wished that we had given opportunity to serve you. And so, Lord, as we look into this day, I pray, dear God, that you would bless these folks. Lord, they mean a great dear to me and my family. And so, Lord, we thank you for their love. We thank you for... Uh, all that they have given to us, and just pray, dear God, that you would fill them with your spirit today. For it's in Jesus' name that we do pray. Amen. Thank you. Be seated. 
just before I get into uh, tell you uh, what God has placed into our hearts, uh, here's a couple of quotes. Uh, perhaps they may not mean anything to you, but uh, I think that there's value in, in quotes and poems and so forth like that. But uh, here, uh, here's one, uh, and it's by George Herbert. Um, and, and I've never heard this guy, but listen to the poem, I mean the, the uh, quote that he says. He says, hell is full of good meanings and wishes. Just remind ourselves that here, uh, what that simply means, that salvation is to all, and, uh, and, and God doesn't hold salvation to some and not to others. I mean, salvation is to all, but there, there it is. Uh, hell is a place of folks uh, wishing uh, that they had salvation like you and I have. Uh, and so uh, all the wishes in, uh, that you can conquer could never take that opportunity uh, that you have today as you have at this moment. Uh, A.W. A. Tozer says the, the vague and tennis hope that God is too kind to punish the ungodly has become a deadly opening uh, for the conscience of millions. In other words, uh, here today we, we know that the greatest thing in the Bible tells us the love of God. And yet uh, that's a... a
but this morning, if I was to put you to a test, I would say to you that many folks to say uh, this morning would say that we are living in a, in a good church, a good, organized, functional church. And yet, uh, if, if we were to raise our hands, there would be many people today that could stand up and testify that God has been good in this church. But folks, may I remind you that here in our text, the Bible says, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There's something about in the life of a Christian that it becomes a hard thing to keep the unity of Spirit. In other words, uh, here we're going to go through some Bible passages today uh, and to uh, exploit the, uh, the importance of keeping unity. Uh, may I say to you today that uh, although we may be able to enjoy the great blessings that God has given to us, uh, if, if we just can't keep the spirit uh, the, of unity, then we're going to have some serious problems in our future. And I'm going to tell you this. I love this church. It is the church that I've looked for for a long time since I was saved. Uh, God gave me an opportunity to be in a church, and that church meant something to me in my life. And the greatest uh, establishment uh, in my desire is, is that you and I are on the same page. And not only that is my passion and desire, but it's biblical teaching. And I would like for, uh, to, for you to uh, go along with me as we look into this to realize that uh, sin is a disruptive force. Uh, sin disrupts, it divides, it separates, it splinters all activity with God in our life. You're saying, well, pastor... The Bible says that I can get forgiveness. Yes, you can. But if you're not willing to walk in the, that unity of the Spirit, then you'll never know how much God can really bless an individual. Walking in unity, the Bible puts a lot of emphasis that that's where you and I can gather our strength, our power from Almighty God. And when you and I decide to become unwilling to walk in that unity, then we are going to divide what God has put together. You're saying, well, it can't be done. Stand back and watch. Watch on the sideline. Folks, we already are uh, uh, up against uh, our, the odds already because the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6, uh, verse 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, uh, rulers in high and wicked places. I mean, everything that you uh, would want to uh, go and see at the movies, you find it in the local church. I can't understand why folks, Christians, Mine, I tell you, would want to go watch a horror movie. <laughs> Man, now, I don't know, Brother Hickey, but folks thought I was weird when I got saved and I realized that uh, going to watch a play, uh, a, a, formal, in, uh, a formal play, uh, thank you, ma'am, to go and watch a play, uh, and even though it was just a, like an enactment play like we like to do up here for, uh, for Christmas and so forth, but to go watch a play about uh, Dracula, uh, I made up my mind a long time ago uh, and that there are some things uh, that uh, is not right with the Spirit of God. And sitting down and entertaining, allowing, uh, entertaining our flesh that, that, that God is against is simply not living in unity with the Spirit. And so I would tell you that uh, sin divides, uh, it, it divides, it separates, it splinters. Sin divides uh, a man within, uh, against himself. Do you know today that today sin uh, can divide you from obeying the word of God? Uh, and I hope that you realize today that uh, the word of God is your only source of strength. You may say to me, well, I don't understand what the Bible means. Then get busy. Learn to read more. Be faithful at what you're reading. Amen. I don't understand it all either. Amen. 
Uh, I marvel when I hear Brother uh, Hickey preach, amen. I mean, it's like that he's got a whole history of Bible verses, amen. And, uh, but I don't, I, I don't idolize Brother Hickey. I, I just remind myself, if he can do it, I can do it, amen. amen. So it takes a time of training. It takes a time of faithfulness, amen. So I want to go to with you this morning, just as to some Bible verses, uh, to bring out how we can uh, endeavor to keep the unity, uh, the spirit of a living God in this place. Amen. Listen, folks, we can entertain all uh, each other and we can uh, have our opinions and have all of that. But if we don't have the spirit of, give, uh, of God in this place, this church don't mean nothing. I mean, you, I mean, you got a lot of churches down the road uh, throughout all the community uh, that, uh, that don't have God's presence in it. And I don't call them church. I, I don't consider that a church. They might have a church name, but it's not church. Church is when you can go to the house of God and feel that God is there. And so let's go through uh, a few verses this morning as a way of introduction. Uh, look with me there in verse 4 uh, through uh, verse 6, and look what the Bible says. It says, uh, the, uh, there is one body, one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope, uh, even, uh, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and Father of all, who is above all and through all. Well, I like this part here, Brother Mel. And in you all. Man, if that don't do something for you, I don't know what will. Amen. To imagine that the living God lives inside of my heart. Amen. And so today, uh, you know, we can remind ourselves that uh, when we allow sin to divide us and separate us, uh, what is it doing? Well, you're saying, well, brother, uh, I don't do the things like you do. Yeah, but if you don't, if you allow sin to divide and separate you, you may not uh, want the fellowship with me. But the one thing that you do want fellowship with is the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. And when you begin to divide and separate yourself from him, and you have no power. You have no ability. You have nothing to stand on. And so here we need to understand that, uh, that uh, here uh, the spirit, the living God, is to live in you and me all through us all at the same time. Amen. And we are to be in accordance. Now, I'm going to uh, give you some more verses. Go with me to 1 Corinthians. I hope that you brought your finger-turning thumbs this morning. Uh, and so uh, turn with me to 1 Corinthians there uh, in chapter 8. Just one verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 8, uh, and we're going to look in verse 6. The Bible says in verse 6, But to us there is but one God, the Father of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord, Jesus Christ by whom are all things, and we by him. Uh, I like that fact. It doesn't take a, a, a high education to understand that, that there is one God, one Lord, his name is Jesus Christ, and we are in him. Amen? And so uh, today, uh, I, we are to be grateful uh, that God has given us his spirit. Go with me there, uh, along with uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Uh, Page, page so over, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and look along with me there, uh, starting in verse 12 through verse 14. Verse 12, the Bible reads, For as the body is one, and hath many members, and all the members of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit we are baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and, uh, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not uh, one member, but many. 
Amen? And so here we find that the body is not uh, just one body, but it is many members as in one body. And so here this morning, uh, we are learning simply that uh, God places a lot of emphasis on the spirit, the unity of the spirit. And as we read in Ephesians, we are to endeavor our hearts, our lives, every ounce of us, to know that we are living in the Spirit. I'm not saying that you live in the Spirit and you float here around about uh, in First Baptist Church. I'm not saying that you stay home and watch the live streaming, but yet you're there in Spirit. I'm saying to you that living in the Spirit is simply learning to acknowledge who He is and realizing that the Bible has called you and I together into one body. Amen? And so uh, I would like at this time to go through uh, some several things uh, that I think is important. Number one, uh, that when we look into our church, uh, church, uh, we need to see how important it is because of the body of Christ. So number one, uh, we need to see church uh, in its functions. Amen? Uh, we need to see church in its functions. So uh, look with me there in chapter 12. Uh, of 1 Corinthians, and look with me in verse 27. The Bible says, Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. Now, no, uh, I wouldn't uh, have the, enough time to elaborate on this uh, as it would, uh, but here, uh, did you notice that when you came in to this church, you began to walk into a place uh, that you, you become familiar of other uh, of, 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 of the environment that you're around. In other words, uh, we didn't come to church and we didn't walk into a place of a bunch of giraffes, amen? Uh, amen. We didn't walk into a place with a bunch of cows. Amen. I mean, those stinky, filthy cows. Hey, when you walked in, amen, you were uh, able to uh, acknowledge that uh, there's some familiar things about these people. Why? Because they are individuals. The Bible, uh, I mean, we know them as humans. Amen. No matter we, uh, or rather we're white, black, green, or purple, amen, uh, the Bible says that we as humans are created in the image of God, amen. amen. And so uh, here uh, in verse 27 says that we are the body of Christ, amen, members in particular, amen. Uh, and so when you think about that, uh, we're not just an organization. Uh, church is not a place of organization, but church. The way that Christ looks at this church is an organism. You say, Pastor, what do you mean? Well, uh, we had to uh, spend 20 minutes to our oldest son this morning, encouraging him with this busted up lip that it's going to heal itself. Amen? May I say to you today that an organism uh, has the affairs uh, in itself that we can have uh, things where uh, it, it'll get better, amen? So let me, let me elaborate on it. Uh, their little Josiah has got a cut on his lip, and uh, he has uh, the, the biggest organism on his body is his flesh. Uh, and so it's already in mode of repairing. It's already in mode doing what it would take, learning uh, what it can do to make uh, that, uh, that injury a lot better, amen? May I say to you today that when you and I, when, when we are connected with the Holy Spirit of God, when there's things in our life, we're connected to him, and it's like that we are a part of an organism, amen? In other words, uh, uh, the Spirit of God will tell us, help us how to get things right, amen? And I would say to you this morning uh, uh, that there are many uh, of God's people today that are sit in pews with a broken heart. Uh, uh, you know, there's many ways to have a broken heart. Did you know that you can have a broken heart when you grieve the Holy Spirit? Oh, I tell you, it's a broken heart you don't want to know. 
but it's a broken heart that you and I, we say, well, I, there's something wrong with me, and I just can't understand it. I just can't figure out uh, maybe today that you're not uh, being what God wants you to be, and something uh, in your life is grieving you. That's, uh, that's that white blood cells of the Holy Spirit uh, that's going to that injury and saying, hey, there's something wrong here. You need to get it right. Amen? That organism of a, of a living God lives in ourselves. Amen? We remind ourselves how the Bible says that he lives in us. Amen? Amen. And so today, uh, a, a church function function likes an organism. Amen? Uh, and so every member, uh, every member, not all have the same functions. Go with me to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Uh, and so... Uh, and, and I want you to look with me here, uh, just in a few verses. Uh, I like reading, amen. Uh, and so uh, I just don't, uh, I love to read out loud better than I do to read silent, amen. I don't know, I just, I, the way I like doing it, amen. But uh, verse 3, uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 3, look with me as what the Bible says. It says, uh, for I say through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office, there it is, so we, being many, are one body in Christ, and every one uh, members one of another, having then gifts, differing according to the grace that is given to us, rather prophecy, let us prophesy uh, according to the proportion of faith, or ministry, let us wait on our ministering, or he that teacheth on teaching, or he that exhorteth on e exhortation. He that giveth, let him do it with simplicity, he that ruleth with diligence, he that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. And so here uh, we, are, we are learning that not all members have the same function, although that we are all still one body. May I say to you today that every function is important. Amen. Can you imagine today as a, uh, as a preacher of the gospel uh, that here I would do my best ability to preach the word of God, but uh, as I began to preach, you weren't able to hear anything. What do you mean, Pastor? Well, God shut up my voice. Nothing would come out, amen. I had all the emotions of preaching, but there was nothing you were able to hear. I would say to you today, it, it, it would simply distract you. It would cause uh, some heartache in your, in your heart because uh, there you sit uh, wanting to hear the word of God, but nothing is coming out of the preacher. Uh, may I say to you today that uh, not all members have the function, but uh, although we don't have the same function, doesn't mean that we're not important. We have different functions for different reasons. Amen. My question to you is, are you mastering that function? I learned that uh, I, uh, in uh, going to... Uh, <coughs> the jail ministry yesterday, and uh, uh, we went there, and uh, I uh, went there with an attempt to preach the word of God. But as I got there, I learned that that's not what God had planned. What God had planned was for me to sit down in a chair and not to preach the word of God, but to teach the word of God in a counseling session to help an individual. Here I, I went there uh, in the tents to preach the word of God and found out that I was one to edify a believer already been saved, already with an understanding of the word of God. I went there to edify him that God is still on the throne and to encourage him that you and I are to, as well as I tell you this morning, to keep our life close to him. Amen. And so uh, this morning, uh, we learned that a, a church functions like a body, amen? Uh, the body must have members who will fulfill their function. 
Pastor, what do you mean? Well, as you and I have already discovered in the uh, Word of God this morning that we are the body of Christ, uh, that here uh, we're, we're going to learn in the attempts that to learn that uh, every function, every member has his own function and should be involved in displaying that function as the body of Christ. Go with me to uh, Ephesians chapter 4 again. Uh, Ephesians chapter 4, and uh, <clears throat> do keep your place there for next time just in case, amen. Uh, you never know which way we're going to go, amen. Uh, Ephesians chapter 4, and look there with me uh, in verse 15 and 16. Verse 15 and 16, the Bible says, But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted that, uh, that by that which every joint supplieth according to effectual working in the measure of every part, making increase of the body unto the edifying of itself. May I say to you simply in a, uh, in a simple manner form that uh, here Christ is the head of the church. Amen. And you and I, he has placed you and I in the church to make it function properly. Amen. And so if the church is not functioning properly, then simply to say as the word of God is to be preached that there are members that are not fulfilling uh, their duties in the body of Christ. Folks, I, I, I do love this church with all my heart. Uh, and we can compare uh, the church this morning to a chain. Uh, in other words, uh, you've heard the old saying that a chain is only as strong as its weakest link. Amen. Well, may I say to you this morning that when uh, members of the body of Christ have learned to be an inactive, have learned to nullify their function uh, in, in the local church, then they have made the church to become weak to its elements. And one day, one day, I will say one day, that church will wind up closing its doors. You say, Pastor, it won't happen. It happens all over the place. Do you know that there are at least 1,500 Baptist churches each year that are closing its door. You mean the church like mine? I mean the church like ours. Independent, fundamental, Bible-believing, King James Bible Church are being closed every day. What does that say for you and I? Well, it should say to you and I that we ought to be in every member, the heart of every member, ought to be involved doing its best, doing uh, and, and, and perfecting itself. Uh, go back with me so that we can read the verse again. Uh, verse 12 of Ephesians chapter 4. You have to get this and see it with your own eyes. But look with me, uh, along with me in verse 12. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Look verse 13. So we all come into the unity of the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Folks, you, this church will never be in the fullness of Christ until it learns, every member learns to submit unto its functionality. What do you mean? Well, in Corinthians, uh, the Bible says some are an eye, some are, uh, some are a hand, some are a feet, whatever uh, wherever God has placed you into the church, it should be your responsibility to, uh, to be in a, an involvement of perfecting as saints uh, that the word of God becomes alive in my life and, and, and it's him, uh, the spirit of God, is him living his life in me. Amen? Amen. And so, uh, so the, uh, the, the church functions like a body. May I say to you this morning that, uh, that in a way for you and I to keep the unity of the Spirit of God is for you and I to function like a body. You know, may I tell you this? When I was, uh, when I was young, 
in my early years of roofing, my uncle used, uh, had drilled some things into me, and he would drill this into me, and uh, and and I wouldn't say it was a, at a at a good pleasuring time for me, but I, I will say to you that today, when he drilled some things into me, uh, that he uh, drilled this. He said, "Son, he says you're sitting there watching me." to do the work, amen, and I had to agree with him, because that's what I was doing, amen, why, because that's what he was paying me to do, amen, I sat right there and watched him do the work, but then he said, uh, he said, son, uh, if you're ever going to make uh, uh, something out of your life, you must learn the functionality of what I'm doing, and so then he began to teach me, he says, since you're already there watching me and I'm paying you, then I'm asking you that as you begin to watch me, learn the job. And so I began to learn the job that when, uh, when he wanted to measure something, that was the key for me to go find the tape measure and hand it to him. When it came to the time that he was ready to, uh, to cut uh, something, rather it was to cut something with the, uh, with the wood or, 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 or a piece of metal, I had to discern uh, what the functionality of his job that he was doing because it determined what the functionality of my job was. Amen? If he was going to cut the, uh, the plywood, I didn't go and get the tin snip to cut the plywood. I went and got the skill saw, amen? May I say to you today that uh, God has placed you and I in the local church so that we can learn each other's functionality, amen? Uh, and so we read it, amen? Uh, the Bible said that uh, uh, some he gave apostles, some he gave prophets, amen? But nonetheless, we all have a functionality in the local church. We, are, we, are, we all have uh, a part of the body of Christ that God has placed us in uh, to be involved into, amen? And so, uh, uh, so we need to consider uh, among ourselves this morning that when I am an individual and I am inactive of the functions that the church is involving itself uh, with in the community or so forth, and I'm inactive, and I don't take the opportunities, then I make my church weak. And that's the bottom line. And so I would say to you that as a driving desire uh, for your pastor is not what God has called us to do. God has called you and I that we began to exhort and edify one another in the word of God through the spirit of God that we may strengthen each other and become what God wants us to be. Amen? And so that would come through the function uh, of the body of Christ. Second thing that I would like to uh, bring to your attention is that a church not only has the, uh, the functions like a body, but a church, if it's going to indwell uh, in the spirit of the living God to endeavor to keep the unity, then it's going to be a church to learn Learn how to love like a family. Turn over with me to uh, 1 Timothy chapter 3. 1 Timothy chapter 3. Here we, we want to see these verses as the Bible would give to us this morning that a church is to love like a family. 1 Timothy chapter 3, look with me in verse 15. But if I tarry long, that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and the ground of the truth. May I say to you today that uh, you and I, we ought to know how to behave ourselves in the house of God. What are you saying to uh, me, Pastor? Well, it's just simple. Uh, there, maybe perhaps, uh, uh, I thought that perhaps it was a, uh, a disaster to get the phone call from my wife saying 
that my sons were in a living fight uh, and they were in a and they were in a a, a, a toy tossing concert uh, contest and, and, and throwing toys at each other not because they loved one another but because of their angry of one another and yet one got injured May I say to you this morning that uh, you and I here, the Bible is telling us that we ought to be, be, learn how to behave ourselves uh, in the house of the living God. Uh, and so I thought that, that, uh, that the whole story of yesterday with my two sons was an attack on me. But now I realize it was an illustration for this morning's message. Any time when you and I don't work on the course of love, we're going to injure one another, and we're going to hurt one another. We're going to hurt the very ones that God has placed into our lives for that we can pray and be the help for each other. May I say to you today that uh, you and I ought to know how to behave ourselves in the house of God. You say, well, pastor, I never grew up in church. Neither did I. But somehow God has taught me how to behave in the house of God. May I say to you today that the way he has done it is because the spirit of the living God lives inside. And if I am willing to obey that spirit and live into the unity of the spirit of God, then I am able to learn what God has for me, and God teaches that love is the greatest thing. Love is what gave you salvation. Amen? Amen. Love is what gave you the wisdom to be the people you are. May I say to you today that God expects you and I to be a family of love. They're not always going to get along with one another. It's going to be true. The devil hates us. The Bible says that the devil, the devil goes about seeking whom he may devour. And if, and if you are willing to live your life uh, without, uh, without love, then I would say to you that you will be one that will be devoured. Why? Because the devil goes after his own. And that is that the devil does everything out of hatred. And God does everything out of love. And if you are God's child then you ought to learn how to behave yourself, not just in the house of the living God, but you ought to learn how to behave yourself in your own home. Amen? Well, pastor, you don't know, uh, but, they, but they offended me. You ought to learn how to behave yourself as a child of the living God. Don't give testimony with your lips. Give testimony with your actions. May I say to you today that a, a family... Uh, a, a family uh, in a church is a family that needs to learn to love one another. Amen? Amen. Me and my family, I mean, my, my, uh, my wife and my children, man, my kids brag on you all the time. My kids are paying attention, Sister Alice. They come home. My wife was able to sit at the dinner table and say, what did you learn in Sunday school? And, man, you'd be amazed it comes out of their mouth. I would think that oftentimes, Brother Bob, they might be better teachers than we are because they're paying attention and they're watching us. May I say to you this morning that a, a, a family should be a strong family. Amen? What do you mean, Pastor? Well, it should be a family where we're having concern and care for one another. May I remind you that every Sunday uh, before church service, men are on the altar praying for one another. Women are in the back praying for one another. May I remind you on Wednesday nights, we have gathered together to pray for one another. Where is your part in that functionality? Are you praying for somebody or are you just willing to accept the prayers for your own, on yourself and yet forget about everybody else. May I say to you today, that's not a strong family. That's a weak family. God has called you and I to love one another. Turn with me over to uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And look with me uh, in verse 9 and 10. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 9 and 10. 
Here the Bible says, verse 9, But as touching brotherly love, ye need not that I write unto you. For ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. And indeed ye do it toward all the brethren uh, which are in Macedonia. But we beseech you, brethren, that you increase more and more. Now were they in decrease? <coughs> were they in to increase in the materialistic things they were? No. The Bible is telling that they were to increase more and more in love. May I say to you this morning that a strong family is a family that learns to increase their love, not to decrease it. <clears throat> and so uh, I will submit to you this morning that a family should develop a sense of one another. Folks, God has given you some of the greatest opportunities to be a blessing to other people. And how are you going to get that? Learning to pray in the spirit, having unity, what God has called you to do, and be the shining light that his desire is for you to be. When you and I have given a sense of one another, then we will fulfill the will of God that we will love our brethren as ourselves. So what does it mean for you and I? It means that we are to take advantage of these opportunities. We are to take full, uh, uh, a full acknowledge that uh, we are to make a difference in each other's life. Amen? Amen? I beg you, any one of you that I've ever hurt wrong, that I've ever hurt feelings, you come to me and I'll get it right. Because my, my, my desire is not to hurt you. My desire is not to uh, destroy you. My desire is not to preach the word of God and make it so so unbearable. But well, my, my job, my desire is to be a, a blessing to you. Amen? Amen. And, and if you're not getting that, then you, you, you come to me because, hey, I, I know how to get it right. I, I'm not afraid going to the altar with you, praying about it, getting things right, seeing eye to eye, amen, and working things out because that's what God called us to do. Although we are family, aren't we? Amen. And so today, I will submit to you that a strong family uh, is one that cares for each other. May I also uh, present to you this morning that uh, as we look into our church, as we find the unity uh, that we're looking into in our life, that we find that a church uh, should be uh, a church where every member has its functions. Um, not only that, that we, a church should have uh, love like a family. The third thing that I want to present to you this morning is a church should be uh, a church like a bride. In other words, uh, go with me to uh, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 11. <clears throat> 2 Corinthians chapter 11. And look with me in verse 1 and 2. Would to God you could bear with me a little in my folly, and indeed bear with me. For I am jealous over you with godly jealous, for I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you a chaste uh, virgin to Christ. Now I want to get into that real quick. What that simply means to you and I is that one day, uh, as we are the church, uh, the Bible says that we are simply Christ's bride. And this morning, the, the job of the Holy Spirit is to present you as a, uh, as, look in the Bible in verse 2, the, uh, the job of the Holy Spirit is to present you, uh, uh, in verse 2, a chaste virgin. So what does that simply mean, Pastor? Well, that simply means this morning that the job of the Holy Spirit is to present you before Christ, his bride, pure in the sight of God. May I say to you today that uh, when you and I are willing to live in sin uh, and not live, uh, or as not as willing to live in this, the unity of the Spirit of God, then we are not simply, uh, we're not simply pure in his sight. Uh, may I look, uh, no, my, just go ahead and look with me in 2 Corinthians as well right here. Uh, 2 Corinthians 11, uh, 
as we hear, but look with me in verse 3. Look what the Bible says. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve through his ability, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Folks, uh, it's the job of every church member uh, to protect themselves in purity. In other words, uh, you either are going to live a life like Eve. You're going to be uh, you're going to be there in simplicity. You're going to be uh, by the subtile of the serpent. You were uh, she was deceived, and yet she was led like a puppet all the way to the day. What do you mean, Pastor? Anybody that is willing to live in sin is a puppet. They become bondage to that sin. They become, uh, they, uh, and I told the guy, and, and man, I tell you what, boy, they didn't look at me like that was really sweet, Brother Mel. I mean, they didn't like that commandment. And I, 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 I don't know how I got on there, but I expressed this to him that when you and I are living uh, in, uh, in sin as a Christian, right, and we're not willing to get it right, we're not willing to walk according to the Spirit of God, when you and I are willing to live in sin, this is how you maybe need to see it. You're saying to, uh, you, when you're willing to live in sin, you're, you're saying to the devil, devil, here I am, come molest me. Have your way in my life. I'm yours. You may not like that, but that's just as simple as I can put it. And I'm going to say to you today that the Bible has called you and I to live as Christians that are pure for Christ. Amen. And so uh, look with me in uh, uh, Ephesians chapter 5. Uh, Ephesians chapter 5. Good counseling here today. Amen. Uh, good counseling. Uh, not, be, not, not for my preaching, but the word of God is good counseling. Uh, Ephesians chapter 5, look with me in verse 25. Okay, uh, verse 20. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church, and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Uh, today, you and I, we can be sanctified, we can be cleansed because of, of the word of God being preached. You're saying, what does that mean? If you, are, if you are going to be willing to let the word of God penetrate your heart, today you can be cleansed. You can seek for forgiveness. You can seek that cleansing that only Jesus Christ can cleanse you. Hey, don't go to man because he can't forgive your sins. Uh, don't go to uh, anybody else and, and confess all your sins and all your, your heartache to them. You ought to be going to God, the one that can only, the only one that can cleanse you. Amen. Uh, and so uh, today, God is, wi- is willing to present you uh, to himself. Look with me uh, in uh, verse 27. Verse 27, that he might present to himself, here it is, a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy without blemish. May I say to you this morning uh, that the unity that we are to endeavor is that we are to stay pure in the sight of God. Why? Because God wants to present you. See, if we are willing this morning, as in closing, if we are simply are ready and willing to obey uh, uh, the Holy Spirit in our life and follow him and do as he says, then the Bible says that, that one day Jesus, uh, that the Holy Spirit is going to present a glorious church. Amen. You are a part of that church. And I would say to you this morning that you and I, we are to be uh, in a mode of maintaining that adoring uh, purity for the Lord. How do we do that? Well, we, number one, we learn to confess our sins. Today, if you are here without Jesus Christ, you're not pure before God. You're dirty, filthy. The Bible says that your righteousness is as filthy rags. But today you can be cleansed. Today you can be clean. You can be set aside and ready uh, to be present to that uh, to Christ in that glorious church. 
by confessing your sin, realizing that uh, sin cannot save you, uh, realizing what, uh, what Jesus Christ did on the cross, he did it for you. And today you can, uh, you can admit your sin before Christ and yet ask the forgiveness of Jesus and let God come in and cleanse your life. Present you in that gl- this glorious church. Folks, may I say to you this morning, just because you are today saved doesn't give you the right to live in impurity. If you are saved today, you have every right to live in purity, which God commands for every believer. Uh, and so the Bible says in verse uh, Ephesians chapter 5 verse 28 look with me as we begin to close this so ought men to love their wives as their own bodies he that loveth his wife loveth himself for no man ever yet hated his own flesh but nourish it and cherish it even as the Lord the church uh, for we are members of his body of his flesh and of his bones You might think today as a Christian, well, I can sin and I can get away with it. Well, right now, you may, it may appear that you are getting away with it. But may I say to you today that if you are sinning today as a Christian, you are damaging, you are dividing, you are destroying this body of Christ. And I would say to you today uh, that you have an, uh, an, uh, you have an opportunity to put yourself before Christ this morning and get it right. Folks, we're not here. We're not in here for some competition. We're not in here to preach the word of God and get some kind of uh, merits about it. We are here to take this church and, and, and to present it back to Jesus Christ, a glorious church, uh, purified, sanctified before him uh, because he's coming. And that's what he's going to expect out of this church one day. And I will say to you today uh, that it's every member's job to be part of uh, being in unity with the Spirit of God. That's how we're going to get through the next years. May God give us those next years. We, we're not guaranteed for it. Today, uh, God can come back. Tomorrow he can come back. We don't know. All we know is that when he does come back, he's going to judge us according to what we have been doing in our body, mind, heart, spirit. All of that is going to be presented to him. May I say to you this morning that the desire of Christ this morning is to present you spotless before the throne of God. Every head bowed, every eyes closed. As we come to uh, uh, this time of invitation, the pianos would come and open up a t- uh, the opportunity to give you that this morning, that you can come and pray and present yourself before Christ. If you're here not today, if you're here today and you have never received Jesus Christ as your Savior, come, come to the altar. Uh, don't be afraid what other people say. Come to the altar. Know that eternity is going to be yours. Amen. And so uh, there are people here willing to open up the Bible with you. And so uh, you take that opportunity. As we begin to pray, folks are already stepping out. Heavenly Father, we come to you today, dear God, thanking you, dear God, for your great love. 